I really don't like face unlock. Apple has done it again. In a world where lots of people have been wearing masks out in public over the last year, Apple is finally solving the problem of face unlock. It only took them a year. It's like magic. All right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take this off for the rest of the video. I think we we get the shtick. In before all the jokes that putting a mask on my face was an improvement for my videos. Hack joke, guys. <laughs> It's probably true though. Back on point, what is Apple's incredible magical solution? Well, there's a beta version of iOS that will unlock your iPhone if you've paired it with an Apple Watch. Leave it to Apple to really work that extra accessory purchase. The thing is, we've had something similar in Android land for years now. There aren't many Android phones that exclusively use face unlock as their biometric security. But if that's a feature you're a fan of, then wearing a mask, probably breaks that feature. Or you might work in an industry where you often have to wear gloves and fingerprint sensors are a no-go. Allow me to introduce you to the magical world of smart lock. Now, because Android devices are often slightly customized from each other, it's likely in a different place on different phones. But generally, if you search for smart lock in your security settings, you can customize the locking action on your phone. You can set smart lock to keep your phone unlocked while it's in motion. You can tie locking behavior to specific locations like home or work, or you can bypass your phone lock when connected to Bluetooth accessories you choose any Bluetooth accessories, any watch, any headset, any car, anything you choose. It's not like Google is forcing you to buy Pixel Buds to open up your phone. I feel it's unlikely I'll face a security threat where someone steals my phone and then tries to use it within 30 feet of my watch. Myself? I bypass my lock screen whenever my smartwatch is connected to my phone. For as much as I dislike Face ID, fingerprint sensors in the phone screen are only slightly less aggravating than Face Unlock. If only there had been some magical device that would have given us both a dedicated fingerprint sensor and a more secure iPhone-style Face Unlock. Some unicorn phone that would have been a master of audiophile entertainment and a master of security. Sigh, if only. But I digress. Let's wrap this up. It should be mentioned that any solution one might pick for circumventing a passcode or biometric security can obviously make your device less secure. So it's up to the consumer to grade the sensitivity of their data and the likelihood of loss or theft. But when those security needs are properly balanced against the real world issues of using a phone out in public, I think a lot of people will find a happy medium that suits their needs. I just think it's funny how Apple's version of this totally plays into the Apple tax narrative. It probably is a step more secure to tie this to only an Apple Watch, but the Android version is more broadly customizable, more accessible, and doesn't require users buy specific expensive accessories to fine tune their security needs. Quick and easy folks, iPhones get unequal coverage for folks talking about these kinds of updates. This beta update, which is not yet broadly available to consumers at the time this video was shot, had already blown up my newsfeed for a day. Hey now, don't feel left out if you're rocking an Android. Chances are pretty good you've got access to features, that can help you out too. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Nah, I mean, it's just funny right now that I can't even show this because all of the iPhones we have in house right now all have Touch ID. I know, it's objectively better. Man, people out there are silly.